My guest tonight is Sherry Postma, the founder of Mission Partners for Christ, a medical short-term missionary organization. And we look at the strategic importance of medical short-term missions in helping us to penetrate with the gospel areas of the world that are unreached tonight on Jim Stock Africa. But before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of your show. I'm Chim Onyebilama, your host. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tonight we have quite a lineup for you, apart from my conversation with Sherry, which we will be going into, and I'm sure we inspire you. I have a guest who has just launched a book. But before we go into all of that, I want us to go straight to the segment of our show, which we call Teaching Time. And Pade Toko will be sharing today with us about Do Not Walk Like Pagans. Pade, over to you. Thank you, Chim. God recognizes two categories of people in the world. Yes, the world has a population of more than seven billions, but God put them in two categories. The word of God recognizes that in the 7.5 billions of people in the world, there are saved and there are unsaved, two categories. There are godly and there are the ungodly, two categories. There are those approved by God and there are others whose lives are not approved of God, two categories. Yes, we find it easy, convenient, so imagine that there is a third middle, middle line group that is not totally condemned if not really saved. A third group that is not really ungodly, though not godly. A group that is not rejected, though not approved. That is the imagination of our minds that such exists. It does not exist. God knows two categories. And the way the godly is different from the godly, the visible way is the lifestyle. There is a godly lifestyle and there are ungodly lifestyles. Of course, a person is not saved because of his godly lifestyle. But when a person is saved, he adopts a godly lifestyle. It is scandalous for a person that is saved to still maintain an ungodly lifestyle. It does not add up. As far as God is concerned, you are either saved or you are not saved. And God is always working to bring the ungodly to himself, to be saved for him to be godly. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, we are told that the godly should not walk like the ungodly. That passage says, henceforth, do not walk as other Gentiles walk. That is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, the word of God. Henceforth, now that you are godly, do not walk as other Gentiles walk. There is a way that you should walk. There are ways that you used to walk that you should not walk that way again. The majority of the 7.5 billion people on earth walk in the path of the ungodly. But you are called to be different, to walk 
differently. And that passage tells us further, how does the godly, how does the ungodly work? That Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 says, the ungodly works in the vanity of his mind. There's a vanity in his mind and he works according to the vanity of the mind. In the mind of the ungodly, there is something and that thing is worthless. That something has no spiritual value. That something may seem intelligent and important to him and to others. But before God, that thing in him is worthless. And it is that worthless thing that the Bible describes as vanity that makes him to behave the way he behaves. It is that thing that makes him to define his priorities. But you are not to walk that way. You are not to define your priorities that way because something else must lead you. Yes, the Bible says, for you not to walk like the ungodly, you must not be led by the vanity of your mind. And the Bible tells us what should lead you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So contrary to others that are led by the vanity of their mind, you must be led by the Spirit of God. Can you cry to God today and say, Father, I want to submit myself even to the Holy Spirit for him to begin to lead me. You know the way we talk to me and I will understand. Let him begin to lead me. I decide not to be led by the vanity of my mind. God bless you. Hi there, welcome back. I, I believe you have been challenged by what Paddy had to say. Uh, look, if you have been uh, touched in any way and you want to give your life to Christ or maybe you have questions or you just have spiritual needs, please use the contact on the screen to contact us. We'd like to help you whichever way in your work with Christ. And above that, we'll have some free ebooks here we'd like to rush to you. Use the contact on the screen now, request for these free ebooks, and we'll be glad to send it to you. My first guest tonight is uh, a pastor, he's a radio host, and he's the author of a brand new book. Olu George is a pastor in Cape Town, and he has come out with this new book called Stressless, Live Full. Pastor Olu, you are welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brother Chim. I'm honored and delighted to be here. Now, before I go into discussing this book with you, I just want to show a clip here. It will just introduce the book. Let's look at, at this clip. Hello, fellow pilgrim. 20 years ago, I wrote a book, Stress Less, Leave Full, Answers for Nervous Souls. A friend and a bank executive was so impacted, her colleagues noticed a new piece around her. This book will teach readers to replace their fears with faith, their worries with peace, their anxieties with calm assurance, their insecurities with significance, and depression with unspeakable joy. The, tell me, Olu, why did you write this book? It, it's quite a fascinating title, by the way, but why did you write this book? You see, the truth is I had to write this book. The love of God compels me to do so. That is because 25 years ago, I had a radical encounter with the peace of God that passes all understanding. This peace is immune to sorrow, to depression. This peace laughs in the face and in the middle of loss, of death, of famine, and of disaster. With hopelessness abounding, this peace of God leads you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. I had no choice. I had to share it. Then the unfortunate and extraordinary events of 2020 happened. And I saw as the whole globe was devastated with fear, with sorrow, depression, and hopelessness. And once again, the Spirit of God rises up within me. And I know I had to share it with the world. So I rewrote and revised the book. And now the book is available. Oh, look, that is so correct. I've had the opportunity of being exposed to the content of this book. It treats so many subjects, but particularly the issue of fear, living free of fear. Tell me, you might not be able to capture everything here, and that's why everybody needs to get this book using the contact on the screen, but what is the answer to fear? We thank God for 
much knowledge, wisdom, and techniques that he has given to the sons of men. Psychologists and therapists have done a great deal of good. In fact, they've done wonders for many. But the plan of God is not for the child of God to manage stress or to even cope with fear. He wants us delivered from them. He wants us walking in dominion over fear and doubt and inferiority and so on. And that can only happen on the platform of a revelation that is so strong, so deep, that it provokes a reaction. And that revelation is based on four things. First of all, fear is a spirit. It cannot be counseled out. It has to be cast out. Number two, fear does not come from God. Number three, fear has torment. And God is not the tormentor. God is the deliverer. Satan is a tormentor. And number four, every child of God has the birthright to cast out evil spirits and devils everywhere they find them. 2 Timothy 1.6, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Also, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Pastor Lou, tell me, as we round up, what's your one prayer for those who will be reading this book, the thousands of people that will be reading this book, what's your prayer for them? Really and truly, I have a dream. I have a dream that every reader of this book will experience what a friend of mine experienced over 20 years ago when she read the first edition. Her life was so touched. Neighbors and colleagues at work noticed the difference. There was a peace around her that wasn't there. There was a calmness about her that wasn't there. They prevailed upon her. She came back to me, bought 30 books, and gave them away. I'm believing that the Spirit of God, who breathes through this book, will come upon every reader. I'm believing that my spirit, based on the depth of my work with him and my experience of the subject matter, will also flow through to them. So on the pages of this book, expect revelation, expect information, but also expect impartation of the shalom peace of God that passes all understanding, a peace that the world cannot give or take away. So that's Pastor Olu George, the author of the new book, Stressless, Live Full. You can get it through that information on the screen. Get a copy for yourself today because uh, this is a book that is quite practical and gives us the tool we need for navigating the times we're in. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hi there, welcome. Like I told you in the intro, my guest today is Sherry Postman. She is the founder of an organization that focuses on taking medical services to different parts of the world where the services don't exist. But not just for the sake of medical services, but for the sake of the gospel. It's a medical missionary organization. Sherry, you are welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jim. Now, Sherry, tell me, how did this whole thing start? What, what led to the batting of this medical missionary organization? Mm. Well, um, this whole thing started with me going on my first medical trip back in about 2008. Um, I went with a team of doctors and nurses on my first mission trip. I didn't have any idea uh, what I was getting myself into, uh, but I went to a country in West Africa in Senegal and served in some remote villages. And um, at, and at that time, these the the areas where we served, the people didn't have access to medical care, and it was Islamic areas. And I said to the doctor, who I actually knew pretty well, I had known her for years. I said, "Well, why didn't you tell me about this before?" And it was incredible. We served for about a week together. Um, thousands and thousands of people came out to receive uh, the medical care, but they were out also unreached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I came back to the United States and something was stirred in my heart and I couldn't wait to go again um, and bring medical care and just share the love of Jesus Christ. So uh, it wasn't that much uh, longer after that that I went on my next trip and I actually organized the next trip and got all of the supplies, all of the medication together. And uh, within a short period of time, uh, over the next few years, you know, um, 
God would have me birth Mission Partners for Christ, a nonprofit organization, and actually uh, bring together doctors and nurses, other volunteers um, to go to unreached areas around the world. And so we bring teams at least three or four times a year uh, to places where they're unreached with the gospel, often un unreached, unengaged people groups uh, where there's no missionary worker uh, to share the love of Jesus Christ. Sherry, many people do not understand the strategic importance of medical mission in advancing the kingdom of God, especially in areas where the gospel has not reached. Tell us how you've seen this tool of medical mission helping to advance the gospel on the harvest field. Yeah, and that's often that's often a question that people have is do we truly make a difference within a short period of time? You know, and like I said, we're working with um, established missionary partners, established uh, partners that are working in the country where we serve. And often where we go and we serve, it's, it's hard. It's hard to reach places. And if you don't have access to medical care in those areas, it's like a bridge for those missionary partners where they're trying to engage those people groups. And so we're showing, truly showing the love of Jesus Christ when a medical team comes and they sh truly see our love, sh the love of Jesus shine through us when we come and we bring the medical care, even though it's only for a week. Now, it's, not, it's more than just uh, giving out medicine and treatment. We provide health education to them. But it, it opens, it shows um, that the missionary partners that are trying to engage them and work in those villages, they truly care about them. And it opens, it opens up the door to share the gospel. Now, we've worked in a variety of different places. Some of them are easier, are, are more open to sharing the gospel. And some of them, there's a lot of persecution. They're very closed. But once we go in and we um, have gone and served, you know, the people don't forget that a team has come there. Uh, to bring medical care. And they, they're con continually asking about us. Of course, they ask when we're going to come back. But um, they, uh, they want to know more. And when they want to know more, uh, at, at that point, the missionary worker says, well, they came because they truly love Jesus. And we want to share more about that Jesus. And it provides opportunities for them to share about the gospel. People have come to know Jesus Christ. You know, one of those such areas is in um, the country of Burkina Faso. Now, many of you that are going to watch this uh, know uh, about uh, what's what ha maybe maybe you know about what's been going on in Burkina Faso. And there's been a lot of terrorist activity in, in that particular country. And we had prayed uh, about going there. Um, and we went there a couple of years ago and we went and served in an un unreached area of that country along with our partners. And um it, it was it's it was truly an incredible time serving in that country, and um, we actually, after we served in that unreached people group, we actually raised up out of that people group a man who is now a missionary, and he's now a pastor, and he's working amongst that people group. So it's truly incredible. So many things came out of of just that one trip. Um, we had um, doctors, some local doctors that had worked in the capital city there in that country. And they came alongside of us to work alongside of our team. And so it just encouraged their work. Say, some of them were dentists, some of them were medical students. Um, so they worked alongside of their team. And since we have left Burkina Faso, they have gone out four times to hold medical outreaches since we left and more people have come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior because they served amongst our team. Wow, Sherry, that's quite a story. There must be, there must be many, many, many stories of weakness on the mission field. Do you have any more that comes to mind? 
Yeah, you know, um, another story that I'm thinking about is we served in northern Cameroon. And like I said, we often go to unreached villages. And um, it was probably one of the most beautiful days. And the village chief, he came out and he was talking to me there. And he was a very thin man. I mean, he was like about 62 years old now. And he looked like he was probably about 85, but he was like 62. And he had, they translated um, as he talked to me and he just shared and he asked, how did you find us? How did you find us way out there in that remote place? But the thing was, I, I let him know, God knew where you were, where you were and where your people were. And it was just, it was just such an incredible day. And people opened their heart and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and received medical care. And so I just, that's just, you know, I have so many incredible testimonies, you know, just um, by our team and just to be used by God. Sherry, that's so true. I feel that that story just buttresses one of the powerful way by which uh, God uses medical missions is the fact that it, it kind of tangibly shows, demonstrates to people the love of God beyond the words that would say. So that's why, the, the you know, people leave you people feeling God loves me. Now, tell me, Sherry, uh, people are watching this, maybe a pastor in Kenya or a Christian in Ghana watching this and saying, I, I want to be involved in this. How can we partner with uh, Mission Partners for Christ, your organization, in taking medical missions to different other parts of Africa? Well, I was actually thinking about that before we started talking today and actually praying about that. You know, um, yeah, we're one organization. We're not a large organization. We might be able to partner with you. So you could go to our website at missionpartnersforchrist.org. And I'm sure that, um, Jim, you'll share that so that they can find out about us. But also, um, it's important to us that our indigenous workers, even physicians that are within your country, like I shared in Burkina Faso, we had uh, physicians that were there in that country that are going out and now with local pastors and their leading teams, but not just there. We had like even in Tanzania, we had physicians that after they served with us, they were going out and leading teams. So what we can do, because we can't go everywhere and we're, you know, a smaller organization, we can only go a few times a year, we would like to help and uh, guide you so that you can get teams together. We can give you some guidance. I'm happy to talk to you like on a Zoom call or on a conference call and give you some guidance so that you can get a team together and hold outreaches. And you can see what a difference you can make in reaching difficult people groups by bringing a medical team. Sherry, I know that the pandemic has uh, affected short-term missions a lot. Personally, it's uh, cut down a lot of my missionary travels in the past one year, and I know it must have canceled a lot of your trips. Now, tell me, wh what do you see in the near future? How, how do you foresee uh, the future for m your organization? Yeah, so we actually, um, even during this time of the pandem pandemic, because we have established partners, we have been able to continue um, a lot of our projects. And so we're grateful for those established partners. They have been able to continue to go out to the different fields, uh, bringing the Jesus film. So we have supported projects for that, continue to plant churches, um, we have supported and provided clean water wells because as you know, as medical team um, 
Health and wellness is very important to us. We have regular prayer meetings where we're praying. And even during this time of Ramadan, we are praying regularly for people to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, a lot of our medical team is serving in our local community right now. And that's something that I'm doing is serving in my local community. So we're just waiting for doors to open up for us to bring a medical team back to Africa. So, but you know, the light of Jesus Christ shines through each of us. So we just uh, encourage everyone to just pray and see how God would be using you, you know, during this time uh, to just continue to show his love. And that's what we're doing here at Mission Partners for Christ is just uh, being open to where God would have us to be, you know, show his love right now. Sherry, that's such a great way to describe who you are and what you do. A lady who is open to the Lord to lead her to wherever he wants her to show his love. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. And like Sherry said, information about their group, Mission Partners for Christ, is right now on the screen. If you want to contact them, and they would help you, probably equip you to do the same thing in your locality. But Sherry, thank you so much for joining us today. You are an inspiration, and I look forward to working with you in other parts of the world very soon, once the pandemic allows us to start going to the different parts of the nations. Thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you so much for inviting me to share with you today, Chim. Thanks. Hi there, and uh, this is where we draw the curtain today. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Listen, uh, if this show has been a blessing to you, we would like you to consider becoming a partner with us. Uh, generosity from people like you is what keeps this program going. Your gift will help us to continue to take the gospel to different parts of Africa and beyond. If you would like to give to the ministry this month or at this time, please use the information on the screen. But beyond that, I would like to say a big thank you to you. I'd like, you to, I'd like to send you a copy of my book, God Gives His Children a Song. This is a book that has blessed people all across the world, and I'd like to send a copy to you. Now, uh, just use the information on our screen and let us know that you want to support this ministry, and we'll be so eager to send you this thank you gift. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'll see you same station, same time next week. God bless you and bye-bye. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else.